Thanks for the invitation. I'm so happy to be here. What's the meaning? That's the title of uh, my presentation, the next 30 minutes. And my focus is aesthetics. Aesthetics is daily practice and aesthetics is daily participation. All of us practice and participate every day and we have done it at all times. This is Middle Ages, this is Bruegel. Everyone is practicing, playing. Small ones, big ones, and so on. So, to play, to practice aesthetically is an important part of our lives. We wouldn't be us without it. My focus is on professional theater performances for children and young people, not educational drama involving, inviting children and young people themselves, not performances in educational or pedagogical context, performances in cultural life, real cultural life. The meaning of theater experiences in children's personal life. My own research in this field is aesthetic. The meaning of aesthetics in everyday life and the meaning of aesthetics in art and art experiences. I'm investigating the dynamic relations between two kinds of practices. What do children do to theater? And what does theater do to children? So let's start in the center where children, their cultural communities, and the performances meet. Two years ago, I had the privilege to accompany some of the Danish theaters playing for children and young people to Shanghai, China. I was uh, attendant the second Danish Chinese festival on theater for young audiences, and I participated in the festival conference. And I really admire the theater people creating the alliances and arranging these international meetings. It's hard work. They know that the center of these meetings are the performances. Nevertheless, they never miss the chance to have initiatives to have these performances reflected as well. So meeting Chinese intellectuals from the Dramatic Arts Center, from the arts educational system, and their students was really a gift. Engagement, knowledge. I attended uh, several performances during the visit, and allow me to tell you about one of them. This particular evening, I was seated next to a small Chinese bar, six, seven years, I think he was. I had uh, noticed him, nodded to him, smiled, of course, we do so. But beyond that, he did not occupy my mind because I do have quite a natural disrespect for grown-ups wasting their time during performances looking at children instead of experiences for themselves. We were going to attend a performance by a Danish group called Danish Ragapak Theater uh, in the streets. The Boxer and the Ballerina was the title. One of the actors, Hans Peter Klüft, had entered the hall, he walked around, looked at us, was greeting some of us, speaking Danish to the Chinese people, and nonsense to the Danish people, 
rearranging some of the spectators in order to make them see better, wrapping some others in woolen blankets in order to make them feel comfortable. And little by little, he transformed the room to an arena, and each of us from Chinese, Danish individuals to an audience. We were ready. The Boxer and the Ballerina is a story about a boy with a father dreaming of his son as a great boxer. And a girl with a mother dreaming of her daughter becoming a great ballerina. The boy himself wants to be a dancer. The girl wants to be a boxer. Quite simple, quite complicated. Do we have to fulfill our parents' dreams or are we going to fulfill our own? Approximately five minutes after the performance had started, the Chinese boy started to lean against me. He seized my sleeve and he laughed. Two minutes later, he got on his feet, crying from laughter. After another five minutes, I found him rolling on the ground between my feet howling with laughter. And now it was a bit difficult not to pay attention and to join his expressive joy. For him, the performance became a force, an energy, which seized him and now was shaping his body he tried again and again to sit down, to hold his sides, but in vain. He participated 150%. It was an unforgettable evening. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the meaning. When this happens, theater is worthwhile. Art is worthwhile. When it does not happen, what? Who cares? Professional theater for children and young people are not intellectual exercises for beginners. Professional performances have not been produced in order to make children healthier, more tolerant, more democratic, well-bred, educated, you name it. Professional performances for children and young people have not been produced and performed to serve pedagogical developmental work in daycare institutions. The meaning of this particular art form is not to contribute to schools, formal teaching, not even to learn children about art. The meaning is to make laughter bubble, the roof of the theater symbolically to rise, to make tears burst, to make silence noisy. If the performance does not give meaning to the audience here and now, if the audience is bored with the right opinions, worthy values, it will never be part of their life. They won't tell others about it. They won't take inspiration from it. They won't use it as bricks in identity building. They will just forget it. And they are right. So, the crucial point is the meaning, the very moment the experiences in this special force dimension we call cultural life. Children's cultural communities always communicate through action. 
It is a community which constantly, every day, deals with transformations. You can actually be what you eat here. It's a community practicing the aesthetic symbolic dimension fictions, walls, plays, every day. And in this special dimension, everything can take place, but never ever for real. If I am proposing that you are going, we are playing that you are going to have a bath and go to sleep, you will never have a bath and never go to sleep because we are playing it. It's not real. And in children's cultural communities, there is one golden rule. Children never ever start activities they don't like. We do. As adults, we are confronted with a community which carefully distinguishes between social reality and cultural reality. Social reality always just is. You open your eyes and you say, oh, go away, but it is there every day. Cultural reality. You have to create and maintain yourself. Cultural reality is only present as a special force dimension racing while you are running, jumping, swinging, singing, swaying, reading, talking. It is a special way of life connected to the very moment, the here and now. This false aesthetic symbolic dimension is the heart, the alpha and omega of children's culture. It raises when you are playing, when you are laughing together, when you are absorbed by a wonderful book, a wonderful performance, a film, a concert, when you are involved in exciting discussions with others on ideas or on feelings, and when you stop playing, reading, listening, discussion, this cultural reality This false dimension never raises by itself. You need a variety of cultural patterns, experiences, expressions. You need rhymes, rhythms, movements, figures, words, narrative patterns, metrical patterns, playing patterns. In other words, you need aesthetic tools to create it and to maintain it. Cultural policy is committed to this register of cultural expressions. It is the most distinguished obligation to secure and to guarantee that the register children already possess will have the possibilities to be inspired, to be practiced, and to grow, to develop, to transform. Because this register is children's own way to the world, to knowledge, to feelings, to expressions, to communication. In artistic productions, in cultural politics, and in cultural communication, the dynamic relations between this popular cultural tradition rooted in our bodies and practiced in daily life and the artistic expressions, the artistic development are the crucial point. Meeting and dealing with art in music, theater, films, 
dance, performances, paintings, installations, computer plays, is the heart of these dynamic relations. Because this meeting secure that our daily popular culture and practice stay alive and is constantly transformed and developed. We are updated in our own practice. This is uh, why we, as adults, have to select performances of the highest aesthetic qualities, performances children can grow with. Selecting them, we ourselves have to be touched, hit, surprised, amazed. We have to cry, to yell, to die from laughter together with the kids. To communicate art and culture is a question of contagion. If you are not infected, engage yourself, forget it, find something else to do. <laughs> In the Nordic countries, this expressive cultural communication is linked to and supported by an expressive cultural policy. And I have to remind you that a cultural policy is not a social policy. Of course it has social effects, but it's not a social policy. You don't meet performances. You don't read or listen to wonderful literature in order to be more social and or more democratic. To travel, H.A. Anderson said, is to live. A performance is like a travel. You leave yourself, you are confronted with a foreign world, opening new dimensions, allowing you maybe to see new dimensions, to meet a range of feelings in yourself and to return reborn, maybe a little bit changed, knowing yourself so much better. Cultural policy is not an educational policy. You can be educated by a good cultural policy, but it's not an educational policy. The meaning of being absorbed in literature is not to learn to read or to be a better reader. The very meaning of a theater performance is not to be taught, but to be touched. An expressive cultural policy is a policy respecting the meaning of the cultural dimensions in our lives. It is a policy with the crucial quality that it can't be tested or measured, but it can be seen and heard. The effects of it are laughing, crying, enjoying, discussing, making fun, creating daily qualities. It's a policy contributing to a richer personal life. It's simple. It's so simple. But we haven't got a long tradition for this simplicity. As a matter of fact, Developing a cultural policy and a cultural communication built on the distinctions between the meaning of art and culture in children's educational life and the meaning of art and culture in children's cultural life is quite new. The necessity was first recognized and the efforts started during the last two decades of the 20th century. From the late 1960s, a major shift of 
paradigm started to take place in the Nordic countries, questioning the educational cultural system and its instrumental standards. To me, that and experience from wonderful literature, exciting illustrations, touching performances, scary films, do not depend on reading or writing skills or on the abilities to intellectual understanding. You can learn by a performance, hopefully without understanding it, always. At that time, authors, illustrators, dramatists, musicians, filmmakers started to insist on children as artistic challenges, children as beings. They did not want to write educational literature, to make educational theater. As artists, they insisted to make art to children and young people. And from the 1980s, we experienced quite a modern breakthrough. New kind of illustrated books, new kind of novels, poems, short stories, new kind of films, new kind of theater performances, all of them addressing children and young people. And all of them built on another notion of the child. Children were no longer only regarded as primitive, empty blackbirds for adults to ride on as becomings. Now they were also regarded as human beings on own conditions and in own rights. Children as beings. And you know, children do not have a childhood. They have a life, and they live it onwards. It's us. We are old. We have a childhood, and we are looking back at it, sometimes with joy, sometimes in anger. And of course, children are becomings. But in cultural communication, we have to meet them as be beings here and now. We have to touch them. The modern Nordic artistic breakthrough started out with this new conception of children taking them as an artistic challenge, making literature, performances, film, pictures, investigating life as it might look, seen with their eyes, felt with their feelings, argued with their social and ethical standards. On these conditions, the different art forms created a richness of aesthetic experiences addressing children with a rich range of artistic genres. In the beginning, children's communicators, teachers, pedagogues, librarians were skeptical. Well, 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 this is fine literature, good theater. Well, but it's not for children. It's too difficult. They can't understand it. It's impossible. They haven't got the brain yet. And we really had great discussions at that time. Today, 25 years, 30 years uh, after the angry voices have ceased, just now, we are in train of developing a new cultural policy and a new cultural communication built on the new notion of the child, knowing that you have to be in order to become, and you have to love the experience in order to learn from it. Just being bored leads nowhere. We do it, we are in train doing it, because it's necessary. We also do it because we have to. And that's why we have to. We have to implement this wonderful, wonderful Article 31, who tells us that a cultural policy in its own rights is the future in the Nordic countries. We have signed it. We have to do it. Thank you.
How do they react? I mean, here on the level, it's all, oh, we agree that children should not start, never start, but they don't like, and they need to be touched in order to learn. But then again, in real life, I mean, how, what are the main objectives, you, objections you have met on your uh, way? In, in the beginning, uh, they asked me, why don't you like teachers? And I said, I love teachers. Uh, my father was a teacher, my mother was a teacher, and I have so much uh, respect for the school and uh, for teachers. But uh, you uh, have for yourself to decide there are two ways you can use uh, art uh, in a school context. Uh, you can open the experience uh, and you uh, can say, well, I just uh, uh, show them this, and I don't want to talk to them about it. Uh, but you can always open it and afterward ask them, uh, are we going to talk about this? And uh, you also can use it because when you are uh, mm -hmm. uh, experiencing uh, a performance uh, together, you can say, wow. Uh, how was this figure created? Uh, why did so? Uh, it's okay uh, to talk about it. It's okay to uh, open the room, but it's not okay to start two months before and say you don't enter this room before you have read all this, because you know that. And be, uh, afterwards, I want to. Uh, uh, post you uh, seven questions uh, and you have to write about it and, and no they go away but of course uh, in educational uh, uh, contexts uh, they have to uh, learn but you also uh, we have something called uh, aesthetic learning mm -hmm. and maybe uh, we should uh, make kind of a, a pedagogue for that Thank you.